Welcome to episode 45 of Counseling Corner, where I try to give practical application to biblical truth. As always, I am your host, Isaac Johnson. And uh, well, it is uh, the week of February 14th, which means it's time yet again to celebrate Valentine's Day. Now, most women tend to love this holiday, my wife does, since it's an opportunity to do what comes naturally for them and love the special people in their lives. Now, men, on the other hand, uh, kind of tend to view Valentine's Day sometimes as a burden, maybe where they feel the intense pressure of, of kind of having to create a magical, romantic night to remember. And it, it's not that guys don't want to do something special for the woman, or if they have daughters like I do, the women in their lives. Uh, it's just that guys don't like to, to be told to do anything, uh, even when it comes to love. And, and Valentine's Day, you know, it can sometimes feel a little like forced love. But I believe it, it feels like forced love for so many men because Valentine's Day sort of reveals a maturity issue that, that most guys don't want to acknowledge or address. And, and that is the tendency to view the woman in their life as, as more of a burden than a blessing. And I know this is true because I've been one of those men. I've been that guy who complains about having to pick up his wife's prescription on his way home from work. Forget the fact that she made dinner, cleaned the house, and is currently helping with the kids' homework. I've been the guy who rolls his eyes and sighs when his wife laments that we haven't had a date night in weeks. Because, gosh, it kind of sounds like a lot of work. And I've been that guy who whines to God. You know, that it's not fair how much is required of the man compared to the woman in marriage. You know, for years, I I viewed birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, and yes, especially Valentine's Day as just one more thing on my marital to-do list. You know, it didn't start out that way, though. When my wife and I were dating, and, and maybe even into the first year or two of our marriage, I was Mr. Romance. I would surprise her with cards, notes, candlelight dinners, and, uh, and other acts of affection, just because. In fact, I, I bought her so many stuffed animals while we were dating that she finally threatened to break up with me if I got her one more. I think she was kidding, but since we're still married, you can surmise that I, I took her threat seriously. But then... You know, as our marriage progressed and and life got busier with work, kids, and other responsibilities, my beautiful bride slowly began to move lower and lower on my priority list. Now, it wasn't intentional, but it was noticeable. Now, thankfully, God intervened. He led me to a book uh, by Tony Evans titled Kingdom Man, and I highly recommend that, men, if you want to be a better man. This is going to just change your world. But I began to understand as I was reading this book that my wife, she was not just someone I was supposed to take care of or or love out of duty or obligation, but rather she's a gift from God that I get to enjoy till death parts us. You know, Proverbs 18.22 says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And Proverbs 31.10 tells us that an excellent wife is more precious than jewels. So, men, we got to ask ourselves, how do we allow someone who, who God designed to be a blessing and a delight for us, how do we allow her to become a burden, a duty, the old ball and chain, or my personal favorite, the boss? Not exactly terms of endearment, <laughs> How did this woman who who we could not imagine living without when we were pursuing her relentlessly before marriage slowly become someone we tolerate because, well, we don't want to be alone? Now, there's an anniversary Hallmark card for you. Honey, I'm staying with you one more year because you are still better than being by myself. Oh, baby. You know, guys, the reason many of us are not enjoying our wives and, and subsequently our marriage I don't think it's because she has somehow become physically or emotionally less desirable. I think that's just the lie we tell ourselves, but it's because she, she, you know, she's depreciated in value. I think because we are likely just not loving her the way God intended. And let me explain. So when I, when I read the the Bible, there, there seems to be four main roles for the man in marriage uh, regarding his wife. 
now five if you count being a parent, but but since we're mainly talking about marriage and wives, we're going to stick to to the four. Um, and then, of course, there's some categ- subcategories of these four, but I want to just for simplicity, we're going to stick to these four. So the first one is, is God commands a man to take responsibility for her. Ephesians 5.22, where the husband is head of his wife, meaning he is to protect her by taking full ownership before God regarding everything that happens in the marriage. Second, God wants us men to love her. Ephesians 5.25. The way Christ loves the church, which means to serve her sacrificially, often setting aside our needs and desires temporarily to meet hers first. Third, us men are to empathize with our wives, 1 Peter 3, 7, seeking to understand her rather than fix her or solve her. And boy, do we like fixing things. And last, but certainly not least, God wants us men to display softness and tenderness towards our wives, Colossians 3.19, being mindful of our tone, our touch, and our words when communicating and interacting with her. Now, at a quick glance, I can see why a man might slowly begin to unintentionally view his bride as a burden in his marriage, uh, maybe more than a blessing. I mean, he does, you know, have four to five expectations from God compared to her too, Uh, But if we take a closer look at each of these four roles, I think we will see how how God uses each of them to teach a man how to get the most enjoyment and satisfaction from his relationship with his wife and his marriage. So the first marital mandate for men that we highlighted is their need to take full ownership or responsibility for everyone and everything in their marriage, you know, protecting their wife physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Now, we we see this illustrated in the very first marriage in history, in Genesis chapter 3, with the story of Adam and Eve, where where Eve was deceived by Satan and she sins, but God calls Adam to account before he even deals with Eve. Now, Adam failed to protect Eve from Satan, and and then he blamed her for his failure. And, And God created men with 20 times more testosterone than women. And this is not only the hormone of sexual desire, but it's the hormone of risk and assertiveness. You know, men were designed biologically to lead. It's just in the DNA of a man to want to take charge, rise to the challenge, and protect those weaker than himself. You know, God puts a woman in a man's life to give him the opportunity, not the obligation, the opportunity to function the way he was meant to. It's, it's like the lion in Beauty and the Beast, uh, the cartoon version in, in the Disney version, where the servants are lamenting because they are not getting, quote, a chance to use our skills. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. Their enjoyment was directly linked to their ability to do what they were designed to do. So, you know, when a man blames his wife like Adam did, he just becomes the victim. He's waiting for her to change and his confidence is zapped because unless there is something dysfunctional with a man on a deeper psychological level, no man enjoys being in the victim role. So God did not give a man the tasks of headship and protection to overwhelm and suck the life out of him in marriage like sometimes guys think. God blessed men with this role so they could have the privilege of getting to do on a daily basis what they were created to do. The next job that God gave men to increase their enjoyment of their wife was to serve her, to love her sacrificially. Now, again, God didn't give this role to men to increase their workload, and he certainly did not intend for men to view serving their wives as some kind of martyr-type duty, as, as many men seem to treat it. No, you know, since God knows that men are naturally pretty self-focused, and I, I say self-focused instead of selfish, because selfish kind of has this malicious nature to it, um, tone to it, and I don't think most men are malicious. Uh, there certainly are some, but but most are not. So I, I use the term self-focused. You know, so since God knows that men are, are pretty self-focused, he blessed them with a beautiful woman to care for sacrificially for a lifetime. You know, when our focus is diverted from ourselves to someone else, our enjoyment of them just seems to increase significantly. You know, we can't appreciate all the little wonderful nuances of someone's personality and abilities if our focus is on ourselves. 
it's like looking in a mirror at ourselves and trying to see them. It just doesn't work. So it's just one of those things that doesn't make sense to most men when I initially kind of explain it, but it kind of sinks in later when they experience the joy of loving their wife through serving her. Uh, Because serving our, our wives was meant to be a joy. That's the way God designed it. Jesus even said everything that he did when he was serving on this earth was a joy. Even going to the cross, it says he, he, for the joy set before him in Hebrews 12. Sacrificial love is just the gift we didn't know we needed to give until we start giving it. The world will never admit it, but the truth is a selfless man just enjoys his wife and his life more. So God gives man a wife to make sure that they don't miss out on this blessing. Now, the next role that God blessed men with in marriage is empathizer. You know, God commands men to be understanding of their wives, putting themselves in her shoes and really trying to see things from her perspective. This is not an easy role for men since, like I pointed out earlier, men are naturally self-focused creatures. You know, a man who can appreciate and connect with his wife's feelings, that's a man who feels emotionally and physically closer to her. A man who takes the time to understand why his wife is saying or doing something, that's a man who is less offended by her words and behaviors. Empathy, it just minimizes offense and defensiveness because if you are walking in someone else's shoes or or you're trying to appreciate their perspective, if you attack them, it's going to feel like you're, you're kind of indirectly attacking yourself. An understanding man is just is more patient. It's more thoughtful, kind, self-controlled. And these are all qualities that will just make any man's life more enjoyable. And, you know, on a side note, guys, it's just going to make you a way better parent. And men instinctively withdraw from uncertainty, things that are confusing, but they're drawn to what they understand. So when you understand uh, your wife, guys, it, you, you're just drawn to her. And so empathizing is re- with her is really helpful in doing that. So, you know, so we just want to say, you know, just kind of sum it up, you know, increased empathy, it just really equals increased enjoyment. So that's why God gave us that role. And then the last male marital role that we referenced is being soft and tender towards a woman. God made women with 10 times the touch receptors as men. He made them more sensitive to tone and he instilled in them a deep affinity for kind and tender words. And if you don't believe me, just read literature, romance books, watch movies uh, that are kind of targeted towards women. You can totally see that theme. So a man who learns to be gentle with his touch, his tone and his words is a man who can be raptured by his wife's inner beauty even more than the outward physical beauty that initially drew him to her. And, and I can say this from my own experience. It is so true. Uh, you know, and I and I've also just had countless men tell me over the years, almost in amazement, that the slower, softer, and gentler they become towards their wife, the more they enjoy conversations with her, intimacy and sex with her, and honestly just being with her. It's really cool. So, men, uh, you know, our girlfriends, fiancés, wives—they're they're a gift to us from God. Any value they have in our eyes, it comes from how well we lead them, protect them, love them, guide them, understand them, and are soft and tender towards them. It doesn't come from what they can offer us. That's just a bonus. The more valuable someone becomes to us, the more we will enjoy being with them and caring for them. You know. So guys, I would just say, if any of you have lost that loving feeling, I would encourage you to embrace kind of the roles that you were made for those, those four roles that we talked about today and just start loving her God's way. And and man, just watch her transform back into the blessing that she has always been. And since I am recording this, the the day after Valentine's day, uh, if any of you uh, men are listening out there and and you forgot (laughs) to do something special for the woman or women in your life, it's not too late. It's not too late. Uh, There really is no expiration date on thoughtfulness. So anyway, just thank you as always for uh, tuning in today, for listening. And if you have any comments or feedback for me, feel free to um, email me at uh, yakima 
mft at gmail.com. That's Y-A-K-I-M-A-M-F-T at gmail.com. Uh, as always, I uh, just really appreciate feedback. And it just helps me. And, and plus, I get a lot of good topic ideas, too. And, um, you know, please share. Uh, get the word out um, if this has been helpful for you. And uh, you know, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, and uh, until next time, I just pray that you will all have a blessed and impactful week.